Okay, this lecture is about alpha bill state tree. So first uh, uh, I would explain what the state is, why it's needed, and uh, so it, it uh, appears in connection with implementing something uh, as a blockchain. And first, what is implemented is a transaction system. And transaction systems have state uh, and transaction transactions that change the state and for example in if we want to implement a money scheme as a transaction system we have state as account balances and we have transactions as payments so we have here you see we have a sequence of states we have initial state then first transaction appears uh, it transfers the state to, to the first state, etc. So it's a very simple description of what we want to implement. Um, so in AlphaBill framework, there are special kind of transaction systems. So the state is represented as a set of units. Um, they might be monetary units. Um, uh, they might be bills, for example, accounts, UTXOs, etc. And every unit has identifier. <coughs> so the identifier uniquely identifies the unit. Um, there is ownership or ownership condition, phi. And for example, in Bitcoin, the locking script is the ownership condition in Bitcoin. It might be a public key. This means that uh, the next transaction with this unit should be, uh, there should be a signature in, in, the, in the transaction which verifies uh, with this public key. And there are some other attributes of the units. For money schemes, a value, the value of the unit might be an attribute. There might be other attributes as well. And transactions in, uh, uh, in any transaction system in alpha build framework, they may create, delete, or change the ownership or attributes of, of the units. For example, the value if you have a money scheme. Okay, so what is blockchain implementation of a transaction system? So why do we want to implement transaction system as a blockchain? First, we want to make the operations in the transaction systems, the transactions, the sequence of, of transaction, uh, transactions being auditable, visible, verifiable. And uh, so uh, all transactions first should be syntactically correct. They should be consistent with the already accepted transactions with the initial states. And in blockchains, um, Blocks are created from the transactions um, and there is a schedule um, and the schedule is based on, on clock, on, on time. So if you know what the time is, we know how many blocks there should be. And Arthur, can I ask a question? Yes, yeah, sure. So in blockchain systems, they're distributed. So how do you deal with time across these different uh, machines? Do they need to yeah, be synchronized? Yeah. Yeah, in Bitcoin, for example, uh, the, the system synchronizes itself. So there is uh, world time, and uh, by the world time, we know approximately how many blocks should there be. And the Bitcoin is kind of self-regulating mechanism to guarantee that a uh, new block is created approximately after every 10 minutes. So there might be a different... Uh, uh, ways how to how to guarantee this uh, uh, synchronous block creation uh, but yeah so every block represents a sequence the block k represents a sequence of transactions the transactions are stored in the block and blocks are added to the blockchains so every new block in every certain uh, unit of time and the sequence of blocks is called the ledger 
and the ledger should be up and only, no blocks uh, should be, it, it should be impossible to delete the blocks from the blockchain. And uh, yeah, as, as I said, the number of blocks is determined by the current time. Okay, any questions? If no, then certification. So the ledger should be verifiably unique. So um, what happened in the system should be observable from the ledger. So there should not be uh, two different versions of the ledger. For example, if we, uh, for accountant, there should not be two ledgers, one which uh, I, I, I showed to investors and the other one which I showed to tax office, for example. So there should be a unique ledger. And the uniqueness should be verifiable uh, from the ledger itself, independent of how the ledger was created, in which machine, by whom, etc. So the ledger should speak about itself and also its, its uniqueness. And for proving the un unicity of the ledger, uh, we use certificates. So every time we create a new block, we also create uh, a certificate. So for example, for B, B0, the Genesis block, we have a uh, unicity certificate C0. For the uh, next block, we have uh, B1, we have unicity certificate C1. And for the whole ledger, the sequence of unicity certificates uh, form the unicity certificate of the ledger. So there are different forms of unicity certificates known in the world of blockchains. We have proof of work, we have proof of stake, etc., which you probably well know well. Arthur, can I ask a question? Sure. So what does, the, what does the Unicity certificate look like in proof of work? Is this like a, a solution to the puzzle? Yes, in, in, uh, in Bitcoin, for example, uh, it's just um, a 256-bit string, which has certain properties. It, it has certain amount of zero bits to, to, be, to, to be simple. And so the, literally the, the, um, the, the unicity certificate just includes that number? Yes, because it, 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 it's not just number which has uh, zero, so everyone can create such number, but the number should also be connected to the contents of, of, of the ledger itself. So it's, uh, it's tricky to find a number which is connected to the ledger in a certain way and at the same time having uh, enough zeros in it. So that's, uh, uh, that's hard combinatorial task. And that's why it's proof of work. So the, the creator of, of this certificate has to do a certain amount of work. So. And so in the proof of stake unicity certificate, what's in there? Is it the it's, it, uh, it's a different certificate. So there we have uh, signatures of uh, the blockchain owners, so to say, or the cryptocurrency in the blockchain. Uh, and the signature should, should be um, given by certain coalition of these owners. And this is, creating a signature does not usually require uh, big amount of work, but uh, the, there is a mechanism of authorization who is authorized to give the signature. And so we, we just verify whether the signature is correct and whether uh, the components of the signature uh, uh, were authorized to create this proof of stake. There are other aspect, aspects as well. So they actually had to stake their cryptocurrency, they had to freeze, freeze it. Uh, there are different ways of creating proof of stake actually. And so, yeah, Unicity certificate, as I said, is also updated. Uh, new, new block certificates are created uh, together with the block. And so, 
if you verify the ledger, uh, verifying is a logical function. It's a predicate. It gives either correct or incorrect uh, as answer. And we use the ledger, uh, say, for the block n, we look at the certificate. We uh, verify whether it's connected to the block in a uh, predefined way and whether all these um, all these transactions that the blocks represent, whether they are consistent with the previous ledger. So this means verification of, of, the, of the ledger. And also, we might use some outside references from physical world, such uh, as I mentioned, time, or also in, in the case of proof of work, uh, we have to estimate the, the amount of uh, electricity, the amount of energy available to, uh, for creating the proofs of work. Yeah. Okay. So there are different ways of certifying the ledger. So first, we can certify the blocks, the transactions. This is the case in Bitcoin. So the certificates are created based on uh, the transactions in the block, the contents of the block. There is another way to certify both the block and the state. Um, so uh, here we have the state. State can actually be computed from the previous blocks, so from the transactions that uh, have occurred. Uh, and also from the initial state. Uh, but uh, it's, sometimes it's useful to certify both the state and the transactions. For example, if, if we uh, are just interested in, uh, in uh, account balances and not the way how this account balance has formed, then it's sometimes useful to certify the state as well. So the Ethereum guys did that for efficiency purposes? Yes, mostly for efficient, uh, efficiency purposes. Technically, it's not necessary because we can always go through the, the whole blockchain to see what is in your account. But it's much more useful to look at your account balance directly and, and certify it. So there might be other methods of certification as well. Um, but yeah, so, so these two are are the main ones. Okay, <clears throat> so sometimes we, uh, w so far we spoke about the ledger certificate um, as ledger as, as the whole. So sometimes we need to certify contents of the ledger or contents of the state. And we can, there might be other certificate types as well for the components of the ledger, but we can list three main types, at least in the context of Alphabill. So we have transaction certificate, which is a proof that transaction T is in the block BN of the blockchain. The proof that transaction is there without seeing the other transactions in the block. But we have this transaction certificate and we can uh, we can uh, use this together with the unicity certificate to, to see that only this transaction is in the block, independent of what the other tr transactions uh, there were. There can also be, uh, sometimes we are interested in unit certificate, uh, a proof that uh, the unit with identifier i as ownership phi in the state SN, for example. Or we might also be interested in certifying other, um, other attributes of, of, of the unit. For example, uh, we want to certify a particular account balance. We, don't, we are not interested in uh, other account balances, only this one. And the property of this certificate is that uh, the proof by using this certificate is, is that the proof is much smaller, much more compact than proving the, uh, 
uh, certifying the whole blockchain. That's the idea. Atu, is this common across other blockchains? So do Bitcoin and Ethereum have these type of certificates as well? Uh, not very common. In, uh, in Bitcoin, we can, in principle, verify that certain transaction is in the block. So uh, they use Merkle tree for that to include uh, transactions in the block. But this only shows that transaction is in the block. So, uh, yeah, so sometimes it's useful. It, it's used in so-called light wallets in Bitcoin. But yeah, how useful it is. Uh, Let's see. And sometimes we also need a non-existent certificate to prove that we have no units. There is no unit with identifier I in, in the state SN. So the state, as I said, is the result of applying all, all these uh, transactions in the box B0, B, B1, etc., to Bn. Um, this uh, results this, uh, in, in the state SN, and we uh, want to just prove that uh, there is no uh, unit with identifier I at this state, in this state. It might have been deleted, but also it might, uh, maybe it never occurred in the blockchain. Okay. And in money schemes, sometimes we also want to certify total amount of money, the so-called money invariant. And yeah, and it, it's also certified, as I will describe a bit later. And usually the certificates are constructed via hash trees. Like I, I mentioned in the, in the Bitcoin, we have a hash tree which certifies the transactions in a block. Okay, so I, I go through the, in a, in a very simple way, through, through the main shapes of hash trees, which, which can do, which can guarantee those types of certificates. So first, Merkle hash tree. Um, so in, in Merkle hash tree, we have uh, leaves, and leaves can either be uh, transactions, uh, or uh, the leaves can be uh, items uh, of the state and all its its parameters, ownership, other other attributes, etc. And um, we compute the tree. So in the in the rules of the hash tree, we list the uh, items as leaves, and then we compute the next level uh, uh, vertices by hashing. Uh, uh, these items together pairwise. And finally, we uh, obtain the root hash of the tree. So we have single hash uh, uh, that corresponds to the set of items. Either, is, either it is a set of transactions in the block, or it might also be the list of items in the whole state. For example, for the item x0, the certificate contains this hash x1 and this hash. It's the minimal uh, amount of data that is necessary when having x0 to recompute the root hash. So we first take x1, recompute x01, this vertex, and then we use x23 to compute the root. And the root uh, so root is certified with a unicity certificate, uh, like proof of work or proof of stake, etc. So in, in this way, we can verify that X0 is in the tree, independent of what else is in the tree. And the certificate size is logarithmic in the number of items in the list. If the, the items are uh, transactions in the block, then it's a logarithm of the of this number, if if these are the items of uh, of the state or units of the state, then the size of the certificate is proportional to the logarithm, binary logarithm of the number of total number of units in the transaction system. 
And there is also um, usually if Merkle tree is used as the state tree, if this list is the list of units, then it is a convention that every unit with identifier i as a unique location address in this tree. For example, here in this example, x0 has a two byte, two bit code, zero, zero, and it's also address. So if we start moving uh, from the root, if you go to the left, uh, we have address zero. If you go to the right, we have h1, so we have zero, zero. We have to go here and we, we find x zero in the tree like this. And if, say, uh, we can also leave empty places here. So for example, if there is nothing here, there is no x2 here, then we can just leave it empty. And we can prove that this place where x2 should be, or the uh, item with identifier 10, it should be there, but we see that actually there is nothing, or there is uh, zero hash or pointer to, to nothing here. So we can also prove that uh, something is not in the tree. It, it's not there where, where it should be. Okay, so there, to, cert, to certify the total value or, or amount of money, say we use count certified hash tree. And the count, in, in count certified hash tree, uh, let's do just simple example for pedagogical reasons to, to see what the tree is about. So we say we have items just, uh, we have four items with values three, two, seven, and four. Every value has its address, x0 has 0, 0, x1 is 0, 1, etc. But they have values. The value is the only thing we are interested in, in this example, say. It's not like that in alpha build, but it's simplified description of what, what, what is the count certified hash tree about. And in this case, we do not just compute the, the hash of the uh, child nodes, but we also uh, add up the values of, of, the, of the children. So we have uh, chil here in this vertex, we have uh, children's, uh, children with values three and two. So we add them up and we get the total value five at, at this vertex. And as we see, the total value of all the items is 16 in this tree. So for example, if, if this is the total money in the system, every time we verify the unit certificate, we also verify the total money in the system. So if at least some people verify their account balances, they also verify, they inspect the total number of money in the system. So it cannot be um, it, it cannot be falsified or modified in an unauthorized way. It's always being observed by, by the user. And the certificates are a little bit different in this case. For example, the certificate for X0, we have two, like we have this, this vertex, just two is here. Uh, we can now compute uh, and, and also yeah, we, we have two here, so we know what, what the value of x0 is. We can now compute this vertex. We can add up uh, x0 and, and this two, we, we get five, we can compute this. And finally, we, we have the hash of uh, x2 and x3, which is hash of seven and four, and we have their sum, which is 11, and we can compute the the root, it's, it's not the root hash anymore, it's a pair of hash and a, a count or, a, or total value. Okay, so the, the computation rules are a little bit different here uh, in, in the count certified hash tree. So uh, we also sometimes need authenticated search trees uh, in Alphabil. We actually need them. And to, 
explain what is the idea uh, in, in, in this kind of uh, authentication trees or hash trees is that, uh, say, in, again, we just go through an example. Say we have um, a nodes with values 1, 3, 5, and 6, uh, the units. And so we first represent them as a search tree. And the search tree, uh, in, in search tree, every vertex contains one of these items. And uh, we have a rule that, for example, if you have five in the root node, then all the, all the, in all the subtree left to this node should contain uh, smaller values smaller value items, smaller value units. And if you go to the right, all values should be larger than uh, five in this subtree. And th the hashing rule is, uh, yeah, for example, uh, one is smaller than five, this vertex should be, uh, should be uh, to the left from, from five. And so three is larger than uh, one, so the node with three should stay right from one. Okay, and in, in this tree, uh, we compute uh, the hash. Uh, so we hash together uh, the left child, the value of the node, and the hash of the right. Uh, right child. So it, this means that we, we have no right, right child. We have no left child in this vertex. And the hash is x3, which denoted by x3, is the hash of, of uh, zero hash, um, three and zero hash again. And so we have x3 here. The hash of this node, which is denoted by x1, is the hash of nothing. One, uh, the, the hash of one and the hash of the, the hash x3. And so in, in this way, we compute the hash of the, uh, the, the root hash. So certificates, uh, say for, um, for one, the certificate contains uh, first the, all the data necessary to compute x1 and this is uh, we need the left pointer here which is empty we have the placeholder for one here uh, we have x3 which is the hash of of the right right child so we to verify the certificate we first compute x1 based on uh, we put one here compute the hash and we get x1. Now in the next element of the certificate, there is a placeholder for x1, what we just computed. And we do the same, we compute the, the root hash in this way. And <coughs> so what we, what we do here is uh, we also verify whether this one, our element here, whether it's at the right side of, of uh, of the of the data in, in every node, okay. And for example, we don't have two here, yes. So you, you don't see two here. So we can also prove that two is not in the tree. And uh, for for proving that two is not in the tree, we have this kind of certificate. So we we see that uh, we will show that there is no place for two in this tree. So where should two be? If you look at the root first, it should stay to the left. Now we are here, it should be, two is larger than one, it should be here. Well, now we have three, it should be here. But here we, we have just uh, nothing. And this is exactly what is proven here. So we, we see that there is nothing here. We recompute x3 uh, and compare three and, and two, which is not there. Two should be at the left, well, and here we have nothing. And then the next step, we compute 
this x uh, x three, uh, sorry x x one, based on x three, what we just computed, uh, put put it to the placeholder, compute the hash, and again compare the the, the order of uh, the right order of two. So the placeholder should be right at the right side because two is larger than one, and so on. So we can also prove in this tree that that some, an element is not there. And wh why is uh, uh, authenticated search trees uh, good in, uh, in, in alpha build is that we can dynamically delayed vertices, uh, create new vertices based on how many units we have. So uh, finally, in the alpha build state tree, we use all these techniques. So the, the trees in, uh, in, uh, used in alpha build are count certified authenticated search trees. So we, both, we certify um, uh, this order, uh, it's dynamic search tree, we can flexibly add and delete units. It's self-balance, we use AVL, search, AVL type search trees, which means that the, the height of the tree is, is no more than 1.44 times the binary logarithm of, of the number of, of units. And this tree enables to create all three types of certificates that I mentioned. So, and, and also in alpha build, both the transactions uh, in the block and the states are certified. Thank you. Any questions? I will not go through the technical details of the, of the hash tree itself. One question, why did you choose an ADL tree over say a sparse Merkle tree? Uh, well, so you can also use, <coughs> you can also use sparse Merkle trees. It's a particular technical choice. Uh, the, for example, the, the balance, balance factor 1.44 is, uh, it, it guarantees that your certificates are in, in certain range uh, of, of size. And the, and the AVL trees, as I remember, are in a certain way, optimal uh, search trees for uh, uh, for uh, uh, average size of the of the certificate. Now, so there are there are uh, different uh, trees as well, like red black trees, uh, as you mentioned, uh, sparse Merkle trees. Every type of tree can be used here to achieve those properties. But this is a particular design choice here. So give me an example of, of how you use these certificates. So you have the proof of, of uniqueness of the ledger as a whole. Yeah. The transaction certificate, which proves that a transaction happened. Yeah. And the unit, tra the unit certificate, which proves that a unit exists in a block, right? Yeah. And then the non-existent certificate, which proves that a unit does not exist in a block. Yeah. So how do you how do you combine these things to do something useful? Yeah. So uh, for example, um, uh, if we if certain transact if we want to create conditional transaction in one component blockchain of AlphaBill based on data from the other blockchain. So this data is not just data from the blockchain, but it should be certified data. And hopefully it's not the whole blockchain that uh, should be transferred from one blockchain to, to the other, or from one component blockchain to the other. So what we do, we just, uh, we transfer data together with the certificate. And that is the unit certificate or the transaction certificate? Uh, both might be used. So sometimes we need transaction certificates, sometimes we need uh, state certificate or unit certificate. And in, uh, uh, for example, if we organize th things like atomic swap, we also might need non-existent certificates that, uh, for reverting a transaction, uh, atomic transaction. And so are there other blockchains that, that do these types of techniques? 
Uh, I think so. They they must use because otherwise uh, uh, they 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 cannot use the the locking mechanism for uh, for um, uh, for uh, exchanging data between between the blockchains. So so th these are by by no means unique. Uh, uh, unique things that uh, are, are uh, special for for alpha build blockchain. So every blockchain must have these types of certificates at some point. How, how do you define certificate? A certificate uh, is a proof represented as as data, as bit string, and what they certify is the things listed here. So certificate, if you verify the certificate, you are kind of sure that, for example, uh, transaction T is indeed in the block BN of this. A certificate is just a, a bit string. It's just a bit string, yeah. Because when people think about certificates, they think about SSL and digital signatures. It's the same thing? Uh, it's kind of the same thing. They are special kind of certificates. They are also bit strings. Uh, Question, Anko. Yes. Is there any other use case for uh, unit non-existent certificate other than uh, reverting uh, atomic swap? Uh, there might be if, if you say, if, if you um, say, if you want to create a new un unit with identifier, you, you might might need to have certified answer from the blockchain that there there is no such unit. Um, there might be many cases. Yeah.